take me back to the day The day that I gave my heart away Anxiously waiting to give you my name A second's in minutes fade Then you came walking my way Everything stopped and everything changed When you came walking my way Oh I knew what found the one I love The rest of my days When you came walking my way
Dearly beloved, we are gathered here together in the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses to join Jesse and Elizabeth in the bonds of holy matrimony. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Jesse and Elizabeth, since it is your desire to take each other as husband and wife, please indicate as such by joining Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says in the Bible, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Then in Genesis 2, 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife. They shall be one flesh. And one of the good things about coming to a wedding like this, a Christian wedding, is that it's a good time to remember the gospel. When you see a wedding like this, let it remind you what Christ did for us. In Romans chapter 7, Paul's talking about a spiritual marriage. He says that before somebody becomes a Christian, they are not married to Christ, they're married to the Ten Commandments. That's a bad marriage because it's a marriage partner you can never live up to. And he says that sin lives in our hearts and is always taking the commandments and condemning us with the one that we're married to. He says what we're supposed to do is because we died with Christ on the cross and was raised with him, that we can divorce the law and we can marry Christ, the one who fulfilled every single requirement of God's law. And then that is the most beautiful picture I've ever read in the Bible of what it means to be married. So when you come to a wedding like this, I hope and pray that you consider getting a divorce from the demands of the law because you can never live up to it. And marrying the one who lived the perfect life that we can't live and died for us and rose from the dead. This couple believes that. Uh, the first time I saw them, I hadn't seen Jesse in years. And he and, uh, he and Elizabeth came into the church, and I, I said, well, I wonder who that is. And I preached, and I looked at Jesse probably a hundred times during the sermon, wondering, this is some young urban professional couple from Asheville visiting our church. I said, I have no idea who this is, until he walked through the door. And I finally realized it was Jesse. And then I've got to know Elizabeth, and and I, I, I thought about the prayers that his family prayed, and we prayed for, for them as, as his pastor through the years, that he would meet somebody one day. And so I, I think this is the, very much so the right person that God has sent into his life. A union embodying such an ideal is not to be entered into lightly, but reverently and in the fear of God. Thus said, the giving of the vows. Just. Do you, Jesse, take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to hold and to cherish, to have and to hold, and do you promise, forsaking all others, to cleave to her and her alone, for as long as you both shall live? Okay. Elizabeth, do you, Elizabeth, take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to love and to cherish, to have and to hold, and do you promise, forsaking all others, to cleave to him and to him alone, for as long as you both shall live. Now, I've been given a couple of rings here. Before we start exchanging rings, I want to talk about them just for a second. Now, as we've been talking about the gospel and salvation, the first act of obedience after someone becomes a Christian is to be baptized like Christ was baptized. And so basically what that says to the world is, is from this point forward, when you see me by the power of the Spirit in God's Word, I'm going to try and be living in the, in the character of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit from this day forward. So when we think about the wedding ring, basically what that's saying to the public, when one way it says hands off, but in another way it reminds the public that Jesse and Elizabeth have said to one person, each other, that they want to be with each other for the rest of their life. And when you see them from this point forward, they're going to be striving in the power of the Spirit and as they go to church and read the word in their private devotions, to have the, the power of the Spirit to say from this point forward, it's just going to be us two and the Lord and whatever else family comes along after this. And one more thing about this, you've probably heard this at weddings, the circle of the ring represents the four seasons that we experience. The spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter. And if you've been married any time or if you've had any relationships whatsoever, you'll know that you're going to go through springtime like this. Today's spring. And honeymoon's going to be spring. 
first year might be spring. We're going to enter into summer and we're going to enter into fall. And we'll enter into some winters. But we're not in this because we think it's going to be spring all the time. We don't get divorces because we're unhappy. We've talked about this as a couple. God is making this covenant right here today for the rest of their life, no matter if it's spring, summer, fall, or winter. And I think this the roundness of this ring can possibly, certainly, symbolize that. Jesse, I'm going to give you Elizabeth's ring right here, and I want you to place it on the third finger of her left hand. I want you to repeat this after me. This ring I give ring. as a token of my affection, my sincerity, and fidelity. Listen, will you wear it as a symbol of your own affection, sincerity, and fidelity towards Jesse? Okay, listen. Place this ring on the third finger of his hand. Repeat after me. This ring I give as a token my affection, sincerity, and fidelity. Yes, will you wear it? As a symbol of your own affection, sincerity, and fidelity towards the living. <laughs> Having a meltdown up here. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 13 shares some stuff about what love is. Love is not just a feeling, it's action in the Bible. God so loved, he gave his son. That defines love. Listen to this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love endures long and is patient and kind. <coughs> Love never is envious nor bowls over with jealousy. It's not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself often. It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. Love is not rude. It does not act unbecoming. Love does not ins insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It's hopes and faithless under all circumstances and endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. So faith Faith, hope, love, abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Father, I want to thank you for this couple. I want to thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord, that it's all been his idea, your idea, to have this thing we call marriage, to symbolize or to picture the gospel, most importantly. Father, also for the order of our society and to have a family that's secure, where children can be reared and feel safe and secure. Father, I thank you for this couple that, Lord, by your help, I believe it's going to be all right. So, Lord, we put them into your care and into your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have the cord of three strands here. Some of you might, might not be able to see this. The braiding of the three strands demonstrates how Jesse and Elizabeth are joined by God in marriage. Each strand, each one of them, holds special meaning. For example, the gold strand that they are putting together here symbolizes that the Lord Jesus has been invited by Jesse and Elizabeth to the position of authority in this marriage relationship. The silver strand represents the groom himself as a new creation in Christ. The majesty, uh, the majesty of the groom is represented in the silver. As Jesse loves his wife and submits himself to the Lord, 
the Lord in turn will demonstrate his great love in the marriage relationship. The white strand, the last one, represents the bride. Having been cleansed by salvation in Christ, the purity of the bride is represented in white. As Elizabeth honors her husband and submits herself to the Lord, the Lord in turn will nurture and strengthen the marriage relationship. All right, guys. We're about done with this thing. <laughs> Listen to this here. Because Jesse and Elizabeth have consented together in holy wedlock, and have witnessed the same before God and these witnesses, and have thereto given and pledged their faith, each one to the other, by the power given to me by the state of North Carolina, even though we're in Tennessee, but more importantly, the Lord Jesus Christ, I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesse, you may kiss the bride. Give him a clap. The family and friends, she gives you a okay flower. Family and friends, I now present you Mr. and Mrs. Jesse Bobby. through all the hard times, through all the winters, 
all the springs and summers. Remember your love for each other. Don't let life get in the way. Don't let it forget all the wonderful attributes that brought you guys to each other. Jesse, always remember Elizabeth's passionate heart and her love for everyone. Remember all the wonderful things that she does for everyone around her without expectation of anything in return. Remember her unrivaled beauty. Elizabeth, remember all the things about Jesse that attract you to him. Remember his hard-working spirit. Remember his goofy ways that make you laugh when no one else can. Uh, just remember these things that make you guys a perfect match for each other. And don't let anything come in the way of that. Don't let anything hesitate your love for each other. Just be stubborn. That's all I have. I don't cry.